All right, y'all. So we're back with a little bit more of the interview of David getting pressed. Now, I'm watching a little bit deeper into this interview, and I can see why some VV fans are, are upset. Because, yeah, I feel like a, some of these questions was definitely a setup for Cryptoids to look very well, or not even for Cryptoids to look well, but just for... It was like they're just there as a way to lead into what they really want to hammer David about. <laughs> that's that's what it that's what it kind of looks like at certain parts. So yeah, it, it it really does you know get questionable. But um, I, I'll I'll say this: the questioning, the line of questioning, and the what's being asked is always really good thus far from what I've heard. So. I mean, it is questions that need to be answered. Now, I'm not sure that they that she has the best intentions behind what she's doing. Um, but, I mean, I don't really care about the intentions. I care more so about the answers. So, we're going to jump into it, y'all. But let me know what you all think about the interview. How do you feel? Uh, I think that, I mean, the right questions was asked regardless of the intent. So, yeah, I don't think the intent was positive, though. Used to license intellectual properties and now is primarily making their own original intellectual property. And then there's businesses right in the middle of that spectrum, like Wizards of the Coast, which mm -hmm. licenses some intellectual property and makes their own and is a hybrid. So I'm going to start with you, Will. Mm -hmm. Is it sustainable to solely run a licensing type of business, like a, a, a licensing intellectual property business in the Web3 space? Or is it required to develop your own? Will yeah, that, that sounds like something leading up to a VV and... This sounds like something that that's more so directed at VV. Like it's like subliminal. Like it's what it feels like. Just just the, it's, a, it's a setup. It's a subliminal setup. Well, I'll let you take that first. Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, th I think the answer to that is no. I think there 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 there's been a lot of successful businesses that have just focused on licensing. So to say that uh, a license focused business couldn't be successful, I don't think would be fair. Um, but again, like we talked about, there's a hundred different ways to build a successful company, and in the toy space like again we think of ourselves as a digital toy company that's how we we like to build the company that's how we identify and that's the vision we're building towards and with that we look at very successful toy companies you mentioned one but like you know let's take our partners at mattel the amazing amazing partners mattel does a hybrid you know mattel licenses and you know they do incredible star wars toys and and uh and all the other licensed digital uh, licensed collectibles but then they also have their own ip Barbie, right? Masters of the Universe. These are Mattel owned and operated IP, Hot Wheels, et cetera. So we operate under a similar model. We license with incredible partners like Disney, Mattel, and a few others that we're excited to announce soon. But then also we have our own IP. As you can see right here, this is Alfie the Corgi. Uh, and we're starting to do some cool stuff around physicals and, and that kind of thing. So we have our own owned and operated IP. We have a storyline around this intellectual property that we can't wait to uh, share more about. We already did a uh, an initial teaser trailer about the origin of these characters and where they come from and where they're going and we are building the universe around them i mean in a sense uh they're like our mario and luigi right nintendo has mario luigi and they build the universe around all the licensed content and the things that they bring in but the center of the universe is around these core characters will is very well spoken and you can tell that he knows the direction that crypto is just trying to go in like he knows he knows for certain their vision and that comes across very clear and apparent when it comes to him. Um, that, and that's the thing that I think is now missing when it comes down to David. I don't think that it's like a confusion when it comes down to the vision and what he wants to do. I think that he's been hit more so with reality. So now he, with every question, he's considering what's possible, what's not possible, what he's hearing in meetings from lawyers, what can he talk about, what can he not say. It's just like a million things running through his mind that shouldn't be there. I feel like they... VV has overcomplicated things to a point where they can't even give a straight answer. I don't like I really don't believe they maliciously do the things that they do. I think that they have just overcomplicated this to a point where they can't give a straight answer. So if we're aiming to build a premier digital toy company, uh, we believe the right approach is to have your own IP. We're very excited about our own IP, but I, that's not to say that you couldn't build a successful business by just focusing on licensing. There's been billion dollar businesses out there that have focused on just licensing. But uh, in the in the vision that we have in the company that we want to build, we want to do incredible licensed product with some of the best brands in the world. But then we also want to have our own IP that we have full ownership of that we can you know, push the limits of the technology and do a lot of cool things with. So for us, it's a little bit of both.
Okay, I got to ask you then. I know you've done, I'm a CEO as well. I've done, you got, you've done your spreadsheets and you've done your projections for your business. So in terms of which collectibles are going to sell and which ones you think are going to have the bigger growth in the future. So for you guys, do you feel like licensed intellectual property is going to be the lion's share of your business in the future? Or is it these new original intellectual properties? Do you see yourself like becoming more like a Netflix, for example, that develops their own IPs and then that becomes like the majority of the business? Or do you see yourself trying to ride the line and staying a hybrid business forever? What do you think, you know? Yeah, I doubt he seriously cares or wants to know that about cryptoids. I think this is more so directed at David and Vivi. Um, yeah, I think that I, this is what I mean, but I think some of this stuff is just setups to go at David. You're obviously looking into the future. So I would assume that they think that it's the wrong approach to just focus on purely licensed digital collectibles. But I mean, I'm the only one qualified, like Vivi is the most successful company here. What are we talking about? Like, so I can see why people would want to defend. Like you, you're arguing stuff that don't need to be argued because the most successful company in this conversation is Vivi. So it's very clear which route is working and you can speculate what'll work in the long term. But the fact of the matter is, Vivi is the only thing guaranteed, proven, tested that is still working today. It has been working since the day it came out. So, I mean, you can argue what you want, debate what's going to happen in the future, what you want. But the reality that we're living in right now, Vivi is crushing it with straight IP. Future, you're looking into the trends of the future. So which direction do you think is going to be your uh, boat that you want to ride on to success? Licensed or original? David, do you want to jump in? Yeah. Um, so, so number one is that the, the there are hundreds of uh, projects and business in the Web three space, um, and you know number number one is to identify what your brand and what your value is. Um, not, Vivi is very simple. We're built by collectors for collector. Um, we want to be the trusted brand when it comes to premium digital collectibles. Uh, when we first came out and and talk about uh, legacy brands licensing. Um, Vivi have done more than that. Uh, we, we become very significant, for example, bringing relevant and new audience to the global for stamp collecting. Stamp collecting used to be a very, very popular hobby. And you could say stamp collecting is a sunset hobby, but it's not because Vivi have bought in partnership with USPS, New Zealand Post, reinvent that new audience in and be more engaging. So. For, for us is that the industry is so big and we just try to be the best we can in that one segment to start with. And that one segment uh, lead to another um, in, in that process, like what Andrew, you, your question was that, will, will we eventually become our licensing brand? Right now, uh, our business focus has been um, about premium brands and le we leverage off these brands because they take mass market audience and they're, they're selected brand that will have very important emotional value for our collectors because they are part of that whole journey for our fans. So we look at our business and what fits in our business. Not, not all brands and not all licensing works. So essentially Vivi is trying to touch on that nostalgia. When I first came to Vivi, it made me think back to the days when I was growing up, getting ready for school. Um, I would have to get ready for school. As soon as like, I would be sneaking, watching Batman, watching Spider-Man, all this stuff that I used to watch when I was real little, like before I got into anime. At the point where I got into anime, none of that other stuff was getting watched. But then like Rugrats, all of that, like it reminds you, it takes you back to where you were at those times. And it's amazing how certain things can do that, can trigger that. And I think that that's the feeling that VV goes for. And that's what VV does for a lot of people. It triggers that nostalgia. And I don't think that they can do that with their own stuff. Now, will they eventually have their own stuff? Possibly. I mean, at the point where you have enough premium brands on your platform and you do enough premium items, you can you build items that's also seen as premium. You can at some point in time, but right now I think it's the building stages. They shouldn't be doing anything but re showing respect to their licensors. Like that's what they should be doing at this at this stage right now. It's all about the licensors, it's all about the IP. That's just what's most respectful. Like, yeah, you're not trying to leech off these licensors to build up your own brand. You're trying to 
the goal that's not their goal that's not what they're doing they're not using these ips to promote their own they're using these ips because it's what the collectors want now if they can in the future build some of their own things that collectors start to value that's a bonus that's a plus and it could be another stream of revenue and big part of revenue for the business but yeah like they kind of tested it a little bit with the vv logos like you know so they, they they're testing things doing things here and there but it's about collecting with vv um we basically cater products that has a bit of nostalgia that you grew up with um and bringing that layer uh, into a new medium Pe people out there they collect spoons they collect t-shirts they collect marks vivi basically just brings you another um segment that you can click now through digital means um and, and it's all on your mobile phone but, but david uh, uh, oh go ahead go uh, ahead mona no, I was uh, I was just gonna say, but Vivi is riding very heavy on the on the legacy IP. And when a woman says, "but," she disagrees. <laughs> she disagrees with whatever you just said. She disagrees with your decision. But I mean, I don't think that this is something that's for her agreement or not for her agreement. It's supposed to be just about what the answers that he's given. But yeah, obviously she has a different take. But yeah, my I have two two parted question. If it's writing so heavily on the on the Disney Legacy IP, a, where are all the Disney fans? <laughs> that was a good question, though. Like, I mean, this all was a setup, but that I mean, it led to a good question. Like, hey, wh where the fans at? Like, what where the people who want this stuff at, bro? What there? Where are the Disney fans on the VV app? And secondly, what happens if Disney? And to answer that question, they haven't really done marketing as much marketing as they should to the Disney fans. And they haven't marketed to the Disney fans in a way where they'll understand the value proposition for actually coming onto a platform like Vivi. They're fans of Disney. That doesn't mean they're a fan of what Vivi has going on. Like, what, what does Vivi even have going on? It's not clear. It's not very clear. If you're in a Web3 space, like, this is one of the best options. This is the best option, in my opinion, in the Web3 space. If you have no interest in Web3, what's going to bring somebody outside of the real world into Vivi? Like, the best conversions that I think that they have, essentially, outside of crypto people, is going to these events with true collectors and, and pitching them for a long time, like letting them all get to actually understand fully and in-depthly what Vivi is. But... Vivi is very complicated to explain what it is, what it's doing, what is what is going to become. It's very complicated, and that's some of the flaws that come that that with Vivi. The vision is not clear. Has is, starts to cheat on Vivi and finds a new love. Then what happens to? Uh, well, yeah, Disney did that with their uh, video inventory. Obviously, they had their video inventory on various television channels. Then they consolidated to the Disney Channel. They did it with various Web2 streaming platforms like Netflix and Amazon Prime, and then they consolidated to Disney+. Plus. So do you guys see it as a risk for your businesses right now? I know you're both licensing Disney IPs right now, that they might make the same move with Web3 collectibles if this industry uh, ends up becoming a, ma a major market for Disney. And they, you know, do, do you guys see that as a risk with partners like that? I mean, the, the difference here, I think, is that Vivi's brand is growing because they're the first ones to bring this to the world. Um, they're the first ones to do this. So, I mean, especially in a Web3 space, the first appearance in a Web3 space matters. Netflix is just a streaming platform where they never owned the rights or they would never bring in anything special. It was just taking someone else's content and sharing it. Vivi actually designed a lot of the Vivi created this stuff. Vivi has put their own touch to these things. It's not, it's not the same thing as that. It's, it's not at all. That, or do you feel yeah, like they they're going to want to go with multiple vendors forever? I mean, we, I, I think I yeah. for David, we, we, we both love Disney. Disney's an incredible partner for both of us. Um, and, you know, I know Disney's very excited about the future of digital collecting and where it goes, which is why, you know, they're making an investment in this space by partnering with companies like VV, Cryptoys, Disney Pinnacle. There's a, a, a Dapper Labs. There's a lot of cool things happening. And I think the entire Disney team is very forward thinking uh, in that regard. But, you know, with that being said, when it comes to all major IP, 
beyond just Disney, you talk about all the major Hollywood studios or IP owners, uh, you know, they have obviously a lot of incentive to try a lot of different types of products to attract different types of folks, right? I think fundamentally, if you get outside of the tech aspect of Cryptoys and Vivi, you know, David and I are, are building different kinds of products. And I think Disney sees it as catering to two different types of people. Um, and I think that's really healthy at the end of the day. And, and hopefully David, uh, you know, will bring in a lot of new users and I'll bring in a lot of new users and that will go, you know, they'll discover Cryptoys and then they'll discover Vivi and vice versa. And then, you know, maybe they'll come in through Disney Pinnacle and then discover Vivi and then Cryptoys. It's really a, a rising tide lifts all boats. And I think it's a, uh, an actual, uh, you know, misconception in this space. Um, all of the companies in the space root for each other. I think there's a conception that like we're all competing and when we see a success of another company, we're like, oh, what they get that like this space is so small and a rising tide lifts all boats. We really need to see all these Web3 companies uh, be very successful uh, so that we can attract more people in a warm and welcoming way. So, you know, when, when Disney spreads out their IP or another uh, IP owner spreads out their IP, we see that as a positive indicator uh, that we'll be able to bring in more people to the space and it's more uh, attention uh, for the space as a whole. So no, we see it as a good thing. At least but, I do. And the reason I asked that question is because, David, I wanted to ask, I mean, I, we saw uh, the Epic Games and Disney deal. So I'll say it once again, Will is very well spoken. Disney, at mm -hmm. the end of the day, is, is for Disney is about money and it's about control. Um, I, I live in the city of Disney, where Disney is, and they control everything here, right? So they care about money at the end of the day, and they don't, they won't hesitate to get up and go to the next uh, Web3 platform. So my question to you is, why you? Why, why should they choose Vivi? How do you keep them on, on your platform? Why they choose Vivi and why how we how we keep them on our platform? Well, well, number one is we we don't want our audience to think we are all Disney. Number one is Vivi, uh, um, you know there there are hundreds of other brands and artists. Uh, we have a whole section dedicated to independent artists that brings out. Um, we would at uh, Oxia uh, three four weeks ago. And every single release around that was being very focused on talents and artists. The emerging artists, talents, the, the, the future of tomorrow when it comes to intellectual property. Um, and, and the beauty around the Web3 is that any artist can enter into this barrier and be part of it. Um, the, 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 the success of the Disney with Vivi um, has been leveraging off the early start and that segment and that timing is only a very short span for us. And we need to grasp that and basically find our identity and find our fandom and grow that. Um, there, there be, there's other brands that we have put on. I mean, this whole uh, past. So basically what I'm uh, from what I'm understanding so far is that Disney just took off and became the biggest part of VV for the moment because it was what took off the earliest. But as far as Vivi's identity, they don't want their identity to be solely tied to Disney in the way that it currently is because Disney is what's basically carrying them. Disney, Marvel, but I mean, if you're gonna be an IP intellectual brand company, Disney is damn near gonna be carrying you because there's not many brands bigger than Disney. Yeah, there's big brands like Lamborghini and all this stuff, but when it comes down to digital toys, who's messing with Disney? like? Toy Story, Marvel, like Star Wars, like who's actually competing with all this stuff? I think that that space is pretty much just Disney. Like obviously there's DC and there's other things, but Disney is a titan, a heavy hitter, a giant in that space, bro. Like it's not many brands that's, you know, messing with it. Few Day has been very focused and other brands, nostalgia brand like, uh, I think we have the Robocop and Jump Pack. Uh, we have uh, Marvel Comics in there. So it's not really just about one uh, vertical and one brand um, or one company being overstated on VV. Um, and how we keep them? Because we keep innovating. The company keep coming out with new ideas. And we will be able Where was I? <laughs> like, hold on. Where, where was I seeing all this innovation? I mean, I, I mean, they did a little crafting thing, but I mean, come on. Now, the little gauntlet. But 
where, where was I when all this innovating was happening? Because I ain't seen it. Like, I'm going to just be honest with you, big dog. But, hey, I mean, the, the plan is there, I hope. Announcing ideas through March, April, May, every single month. And we learn from some of the mistakes that we made. we developing new products, new experience, new immersed wave for people and audience to be taking part with that. We talked about this in our very early on our journey when we started, you know, one day we will see people wearing wearable devices and able to see digital um, uh, collectible throughout their homes. And Apple Pro Vision had brought that technology to us. And, you know, that will be a sector that will be focusing how we can do that. We have our own metaverse coming where your collectible is going to be living within that and how you... Um, you know how how you will be decorating that room and i don't like that <laughs> i like the fact that he said our metaverse will be coming still is there's some separation from disney but he said then he proceeds to say decorating that room that's the metaverse it's just like a i think the metaverse is going to be a glorified showroom which works if you can get this if you can get this stuff your nfts Get it into some other projects like what Disney and Fortnite got going on. Then it brings a little bit more value. But the value that we thought Vivi was going to bring, Ready Player One, that's not really what Vivi is really bringing. Like, if anything, Vivi could just be like what people use to decorate metaverses, which, I mean, it's cool, but it's not Ready Player One. But it's cool still. Giving that experience throughout. Which, by the way, means all means you would have to get people to care about AR to come in and do that. But here, but here is my this is Mo, this is a Mona question. When I look at Vivi, there is so much potential, and there's so much. This is a bar to come in and do that. But here, you would have and all right, giving that experience throughout. We gonna do this in another video. I don't want this one to be too long because yeah, she she yeah, she heavy hitting, bro. But yeah, that's that's where we gonna end it, man. Be sure to drop that thumbs up, subscribe, turn on notifications, and stay tuned for the next part. Peace out, fam.